Hello and welcome to the IGCSE aid channel. This lesson will cover momentum part 1. So let's start by talking about inertia. Mass is a property in objects that has inertia. And inertia means the resistance in any change in motion. As the mass of the object increases, the more inertia, the more resistance to change it has. In order to change the inertia of an object, you need to apply a force. To demonstrate, look at the figures to the right. On the top figure, you have two buckets, an empty bucket and another one filled with sand. By intuition, you could tell that the bucket filled with sand has more inertia because it has more mass, therefore it's harder to move. Inertia is aligned with Newton's first law, and actually Newton's first law is called the law of inertia, which is talking about objects that do not experience a force. And those objects, if stationary, they want to remain stationary, and if they are moving with constant velocity, then they will keep on moving with the same constant velocity. Why? Because they have this property, the property that we call as inertia. They resist any change of motion. They don't want to change any uh, their motion unless you apply the force. So for instance, to move this elephant over here, definitely you need to apply a hard force. Why? Because this elephant has a lot of mass, which means it has a lot of inertia, resistance to change of motion. When a force is applied to an object, the object accelerates, therefore changing its velocity and therefore changing its inertia. And that is explained by Newton's second law, which says the resultant force is mass times acceleration. As long as you apply a resultant force, the object is going to accelerate. The property of inertia is applied for both stationary and moving objects. If an object is stationary, you need to apply a force to move it. If the object is already moving, then you need to apply a force to stop it. Now objects, they do not want to change their state of motion because they have inertia. Another term for inertia is momentum. Momentum is just the constant state of motion objects have. To get a better understanding at momentum, let's look at the following example. If let's say a ping pong ball and a bowling ball are rolling towards the watermelon at the same speed, both the bowling ball and the ping pong over here, they have the same speed. Which one of them do you think will cause more damage on the watermelon? And of course, by intuition, the bowling ball is going to cause more damage. And why is that? Well, because it has more mass. Although both of them are moving with the same speed, the bowling ball is more massive, therefore it would cause more damage. Now let's look at a similar example. If a bullet this time and a bowling ball are rolling towards the same watermelon, however, the bullet is of course moving at much higher speed compared to the bowling ball. Now what do you think? Which one would cause more damage? Of course this time you would probably guess that the bullet will cause more damage. But then what's the standard? How can we know which one would cause more damage? Is it decided based on mass or is it decided based on velocity? And that's where the term momentum comes handy in. Momentum, by definition, is the physical quantity of objects related to both things, mass and velocity together at the same moment. Therefore, the formula for momentum, the state of motion of an object that accounts for both mass and velocity, would equal mass times velocity. Those are the two quantities. If an object has more mass, it has more momentum, it has more inertia, more resistance to change. Similarly, if it has more velocity, 
then it has more momentum or more inertia and resistance to change. Now for momentum, we usually denote, denote it by the letter P. So P equals mass times velocity. That's the formula for momentum. Don't forget it. And to figure out the unit of this property, it's very simple. Well, what's the unit of mass? The unit of mass is kilograms. What's the unit of velocity? Well, velocity is meters per second. So the unit is just kilogram times meters per second. That's the unit of momentum. Another thing you need to remember about momentum is that it's a vector quantity. What does that mean? A vector quantity means it is a quantity that has a direction. So what is the direction of momentum? Well, it's the same as the direction of the velocity. So don't forget this statement about momentum over here. The more is the mass, the more is the momentum. The more is the velocity, also the more is the momentum. What is momentum? It's just a quantity of an object. If the object exists, it has a mass and it has a velocity, therefore it has momentum, which is the inertia. You can say an amount or that we can measure for the resistance of change. If an object has a lot of momentum, well, it has a lot of inertia. It has a lot of resistance to change in motion. If you look at this example over here, you can see that both of them have the same velocity. However, the truck is definitely more massive than the car. Therefore, the momentum of the truck is more than the momentum of the car. Now, if you look at the second example, you have two cars of the same mass. However, the first car has more velocity than the second car. If it has more velocity, then definitely it has more momentum. Never forget the connection between Newton's first law and momentum. To demonstrate, if an object is at rest, it will remain at rest. Why? Well, it has an inertia, it has a momentum, it does not want to change its momentum, which is in this case, of course, zero. The momentum is zero, well, because momentum is mass times velocity. The velocity in this case is zero, so the momentum is zero. However, the object does not want to change this momentum, it wants to keep it, unless you apply a force. And the force in this case is coming from the kick over here. Now when the force is applied, it changes its momentum. Now the ball over here has a new momentum and it wants to keep this momentum forever. It wants to keep it forever. It does not want to change. It has inertia unless it's acted by another force again, which stops the ball. The property of momentum is more clear in space. This is because in space you don't have a lot of the frictional forces or the weight acting on objects. So watch over here this astronaut as he's going to show the property of momentum in space. As you can see over here the water droplet has momentum and it wants to keep this momentum forever unless acted by a force and then the momentum changes. Let's look at momentum in daily life. Look at those two pictures and try to conclude what happened and how is momentum related to those two pictures. In the first example, well, you can see both the truck and what is inside the truck, they were moving in that direction, in this direction over here. However, when the truck applied the brakes, the momentum of the truck was reduced. Unfortunately, for this block over here, for the stone over here, no force was applied or the force of friction between the stone and the uh, lower surface of the inside of the truck was not enough to change the momentum of the stone. Therefore, it kept on traveling with the same momentum. Similarly over here, both the bike over here and the biker were having the same momentum. However, the bike received a force 
therefore changing the momentum of the bike. However, the biker did not receive a similar force, therefore he will continue traveling with the same momentum. He has an inertia, a resistance to change his momentum. Let's look at another example. So what happened over here? Well, you can tell the load on the truck. Well, when the, both the load and the truck were stopping, then the momentum of the load was zero and the momentum of the truck was also zero. When the truck started to move, well, because it has the engine force, which is moving the truck, the load on top did not receive similar force. Therefore, it kept its momentum. The truck was moving in that direction while the load remained in its position. Why? Because it didn't receive enough force to move it. Therefore, it's not going to change its momentum. And let's look at another example. Now here, the opposite happened. What does that mean? Both the truck and the load, they had a velocity in that direction. However, when the truck applied the brakes, it received the force stopping the truck. The load on top of the truck did not receive a similar force. Therefore, it will continue traveling with the same momentum and hitting the car in front of it. All right. Up to this point, we managed to finish a large section of our lesson. However, there is another thing to be considered, which is you need to be able to differentiate between momentum and force. To do that, focus on our next example. Let's say we have those two boys over here and the two girls on the other building. If the people on the surface have basketballs with them of equal mass and size and both of them were allowed to fall freely by the acceleration of gravity. Now let's analyze the values related to motion. At time zero, the start of the fall, the velocity was zero. Why? Well, it was just allowed to fall freely. And of course, we know the acceleration of free fall, any objects falling freely near the surface of Earth, has an acceleration of 10 meters per second square. And the weight is 3 newtons. How did we manage to get the weight? Well, remember, weight equals mass times g. What is g? The acceleration of free fall, which is 10. So if the mass was 0 0.3 multiplied by 10, you get 3 newtons. So this ball over here at time 0 has an initial velocity of 0, an acceleration of 10 meters per second per second, and a force of 3 newtons, which is the weight, the gravitational force. The other ball has similar conditions. It was just allowed to fall and it has the acceleration of free fall of 10 with the same weight because it has the same mass. After one second passes, let me just get the marker over here. After one second passes, well, we know the velocity is going to increase by 10. Why? Because that's the meaning of acceleration, the amount of increase in velocity. And the acceleration is 10 meters per second per second. So after one second, the velocity will increase by 10. The weight does not change. The acceleration does not change. And this is the same for the other ball. At time zero, the velocity was zero. And after one second, the velocity increases by 10. So after another second, after another second over here, the time increases from 1 to 2 and we know as the time increases by 1 second the velocity will increase by 10 because it has a constant acceleration the acceleration of free fall 
So now after 2 seconds the velocity will become 20 meters per second. The acceleration remains the same and the force remains the same. And that's the same for the other ball. However over here we can see that the ball hit the other student over here while the other student will be hit only after one more second passes the ball hits the girl over here after two seconds however because the the boy over here was at a building of longer height the ball will take longer time to reach the, the boy on the ground so after one more second from time two to time three the velocity will now change from 20 to 30. The acceleration remains the same and the force remains the same. So now I want you to ask yourselves by intuition which one of those students the boy or the girl will feel more pain? Most of you will say the boy will feel more pain and of course that is actually correct but I want you to think of something. How come he felt more pain although the weight over here was 3 newton and the weight over here was also 3 newton both balls had the same force when they hit the boy however the boy received more pain why is that and that is actually because you don't really feel the force you feel the change in momentum as you can see over here, the ball in this case had more velocity than this ball over here. So this means this ball had more momentum and when it hits the boy it stops. So the boy experiences a great change in momentum compared to the girl. Now let's calculate the momentums at each case. At the start of the free fall the momentum for both balls is zero. Why is it zero? Well, the mass is 0 0.3 and the velocity is zero. So 0 0.3 times zero, you get a momentum of zero kilogram meters per second for both balls. Now, after one more second, the mass over here is still 0 0.3, but the velocity changes to 10. So once you multiply those two quantities, 0 0.3 times 10, you get a momentum of 3. So after one more second, notice the momentum increased by 3. Same over here. And let's look at the momentum after one more second. At time 2, the velocity is 20 and the mass is still 0 0.3. Once you multiply 0 0.3 times 20, you get a momentum of 6. Same over here, the momentum is also 6. How did we get this? The velocity of 20 times the mass of the ball, which is 0 0.3. Now notice again one more time, after one more second, the momentum increased by 3. So you can see, of every second, the momentum increases by 3 kilogram meters per second. And just to emphasize, why is the momentum changing? Well, the momentum is changing because it's experiencing a force, which is the force of three newtons. So after one more second over here at time three, again, the velocity increases. We have a new velocity of 30. The ball has a new velocity multiplied by its mass, which is 0 0.3. You get a momentum of nine. When the ball hits the boy, it has a momentum of nine. When the ball hits the girl, it has a momentum of 6. Now, I want you to watch carefully what we are going to conclude. If you see over here, let me get the marker. When the acceleration was 10 meters per second per second, or 10 meters per second square, this means this is the rate of change of velocity. So after one second, velocity increases by 10 after another second velocity increases by another 10 that is the meaning of acceleration the increase or the rate of increase in velocity 
Now similarly, there is also the meaning of force but for momentum. So what does that mean? Currently the momentum is zero. After one second, the momentum increases to three. Why? Because the force of three was applied. After one more second, the momentum increases by another three. One more second and then also another three. So you can think about force as the rate of change of momentum. 3 Newton means that the momentum of an object is going to increase by 3 kilogram meters per second every second. And that's the meaning of force. It's actually the rate of change of momentum. From the previous conclusion, we can come up with another formula of force and we can say the resultant force is actually the change in momentum divided by time. In other words, the rate of change of momentum, how much the momentum is changing every second. So what is the change of momentum? Well that's easy, change in momentum is the final momentum minus the initial momentum. You can compare it to the formula of acceleration. Acceleration is the rate of change in velocity, which means final velocity minus initial velocity over time. Basically, in acceleration, we are just looking at the change in the motion, in the value of motion. But in force, we are looking at the change of momentum, which includes the speed and the mass of the object. Alright, so now let's link this formula, the new formula we obtained, with the previous formula you know of force. Now over here, let me just get the marker, over here, this is the new formula we just obtained. Force is the change of momentum over time. And over here, the previous formula you already know about force, which is mass times acceleration. And we know that momentum is mass times velocity. So let's see how this formula is exactly the same as this formula. Now when we substitute the values for final momentum, well what's the final momentum of an object? Let me just draw the object. Okay, so this is the object with an initial velocity u and after some time it gets an another velocity, a final velocity v. So this is the object with the mass m, has an initial velocity, and after some times it gets another velocity. Let's say this is the final velocity, and this is the initial velocity. So final momentum means the mass times final velocity. So m times v. And what's initial momentum? Well, that would be the mass times the initial velocity. And the whole thing divided by time because we are trying to find the rate of change of momentum. How much is the momentum changing every second? Alright, so this is what we obtained so far. Now, by taking mass as a common factor, as you can see, the mass is the same. It did not change. If you take it as a common factor, what do you get? Well, you get the final velocity minus the initial velocity divided by time. And what is that? What is final velocity minus initial velocity divided by time? This is something you already studied before, which is actually acceleration. Acceleration is the change in velocity, final velocity minus initial velocity divided by time. So we can substitute this value by A and that's how we get resultant force equals mass times acceleration. So as you can see, this formula is exactly the same as this one over here. So when do we use each one? Well, it depends on the question that you get in the IGCSE question. If they give you the change of momentum and time, then use this formula. If they give you the mass and acceleration, then just, just use this formula. And finally, the last thing in today's lesson is impulse. Now let's look at the last formula we obtained for force. If we rearrange it, 
and take time to this side over here what do you get well you get force multiplied by time equals the change in momentum the change in momentum final minus initial equals force multiplied by time well this property over here is what we call impulse so that's it impulse is just another name for the change in momentum instead of saying the change in momentum we just say impulse in other words we can write this formula as force equals impulse impulse divided by time and this is a formula that you need to be familiar with usually the IGCSE questions use it a lot so let's discuss impulse more now Newton noticed that if different objects different objects means they have different masses were subjected to the same force so if we provided the same force to different objects they will get different velocities well because of course they will have different accelerations however the change in momentum the impulse will be the same what does this really mean let's look at an example to understand what's happening over here you have two cars of different masses now the first toy car over here has a mass of two kilograms the other one has a mass of one kilogram okay let me just change the color uh, let's use black okay so this is two kilograms and this is one kilograms over here now if both objects are stationary at the start which means the velocity of each object is zero and we subject them to a force of 20 newtons so this is just the first part of the statement over here different objects subjected to the same force okay so let's see what would happen now let's find the acceleration of each object we know the acceleration is the resultant force divided by the mass so the resultant force over here is 20 and the mass is 2 when you divide it 20 divided by 2 you get an acceleration of 10 meters per second per second similarly over here we have a force of 20 the same force but the mass is now 1 so 20 divided by 1 you get an acceleration of 20 of course they will get different accelerations because they have different masses for the same force now this means that after one second after one second over here well what would the velocities be of each object and of course the first object would have a velocity of 10 why because it has an acceleration of 10 meters per second Per second so after one second passed the, uh, the velocity will increase by 10 meters per second and that's what happened while the other object will have an increase of 20 because the acceleration was 20 now let's look at the initial momentums of both objects before they moved so if you look over here the mass is 2 and the velocity is 0 well and we know momentum is mass times velocity so 2 times 0 you get a momentum of 0 similarly over here 1 times 0 you get a momentum of 0 now let's find the momentum after the cars moved now over here the mass is 2 and the velocity is 10 2 times 10 you get a momentum of 20 similarly over here the mass is 1 the velocity is 20 when you multiply them you get a momentum of 20 so as you see when we applied the same force for different objects they got different velocities the velocity over here is 10 and the velocity over here is 20 however they gained the same impulse the same change in momentum all right so finally this lesson momentum part one has ended now let's do some examples to make sure you got all the necessary knowledge so if you have a model car of mass two kilograms this is the mass traveling in a straight line and the velocity increases from three this is from three 
two nine. So definitely this is the initial velocity and this is the final velocity. And this increase in velocity happened in a time of four seconds. We are required to find the resultant force. So how can we find this value? Well, we have two formulas for resultant force. We can use either one. I'm going to show you how I'll find it using both formulas. So let's look at the first way using the impulse and force formula. So over here, force is impulse over time and impulse is final momentum minus initial momentum over time. And final momentum is just the mass of the object times final velocity minus the initial momentum, which is the mass of the object multiplied by initial velocity. And the whole thing is, of course, divided by time. So by substituting the values in the equation, 2 times 9 minus 2 times 3 divided by 4 and then get the value of force of 3 newtons. Now let's find force using the other formula. Force equals mass times acceleration. So we know acceleration is the rate of change in velocity or V minus U divided by time. And by substituting the values, you get an acceleration of 1.5 meters per second square. So now we'll apply the formula and the mass is 2 times the acceleration 1.5. The force is also 3 newtons. And now let's look at a final example. Let's say a small rocket pushes out 2 kilograms of gases every second at a velocity of 100 meters per second from rest. What thrust is produced by the engine? Think carefully for this question. Pause the video and think how would you find the thrust? So let's try to imagine the whole thing. If this is the rocket over here and this is the information, it pushes two kilograms of gases every second with a velocity of 100 meters per second. Now let's find the momentum changes of for the gases. For the gases, well, it had a mass of 2, mass of 2 over here, and a final velocity of 100. So the final momentum of the gases that leave the rocket is 200 kilogram meters per second. And what was the initial momentum of the gases? Well, they already said they were starting from rest inside the rocket. So the initial momentum is the mass, which is 2 kilograms times 0, and you get an initial momentum of 0. We have the final momentum and we have the initial momentum. So let's find the force on the gases. And the force equals the impulse, the change of momentum, this is the impulse, divided by the time. And the impulse is of course 200 minus 0, you get an impulse of 200 kilogram meters per second and this process happens every second it's stated over here every second so the time is actually one second every second two kilogram of gases change their momentum by 200 kilogram meters per second so what do you get well we get 200 kilogram meters per second per second or kilogram meters per second square which is newtons so the final force, the resultant force acting on the gases is 200 newtons. Now, I just want you to notice one thing. We found that the force on the gases, the gases that leave the rocket over here, they experience a force acting downwards of 200 newtons. But that is not actually the thrust. The thrust is the force acting on the rocket. However, we know the thrust is also 200 newtons except that is going upwards and this is according to newton's third law for every action there is an equal but opposite reaction the rocket is pushing the gases with a force of 200 newtons therefore the gases are pushing the rocket in the opposite direction with a force of 200 newtons Thank you so much. That was the end of our lesson. You have been a fantastic audience. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe.